Hi, this is Froda and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today you'll learn how to create great relationships, personal and professional. And these big ideas come from the great book, 50 Ways to Create Great Relationships by Steve Chandler. 50 Ways to Create Great Relationships. No subtitle needed. I uh, got this book after having reviewed Steve Chandler's um, book, Crazy Good, and uh, his publisher Maurice Bassett contacted me and asked if I also wanted to see his book, 50 Great Ways to Create Great Relationships. And of course I wanted to. So uh, when I got it in the mail, I expected to get this book, but I was astonished when I also saw that he also brought four other books, including Time Warrior and Wealth Warrior by Steve Chandler, and some other books. So, thank you Maurice, if you're looking at this. Steve Chandler, as you may know, is uh, the founder of the Coaching Prosperity School. He himself is a personal success coach and has um, been uh, consulting over 30, cons uh, far, 4 to 500 companies. And one of the reasons that I really admire Steve Chandler is because of his writing style. He is so humble and conversational in his writing. So, if you want to um, improve your re personal and professional relationships, I think you'll love this book. Let's actualize with our first big idea, which is creator versus reactor. And I have to create my response. Getting my pet. Yes, creating versus reactor. Steve uh, defines two different types of people in relationships. He says there are creators who are uh, conscious about what it is they want. They use their imagination to think of novel ways to create relationships. And then you have the reactors who use the more animal part of their brain. They simply react. He uh, likens it to a dog. He, uh, when he sees his dog, so lying by the fire. He doesn't think that the dog is uh, probably thinking about his future and uh, planning the next next week because he's a dog. No, that dog is uh, probably just reacting to whatever is happening. So uh, and he also likes this to a fish. A dead fish in the water can do nothing but react. It just goes through the streams, it bumps against the rocks in the stream and it really ha doesn't have any conscious choice, because the dead is fish is dead. But a live fish, he swims towards the destinations that he needs to go, goes through the streams and gets to his destination, creates his life. And we also want to be creators of our lives. And Steve says that the first step is to be conscious that it is a choice, to be either a creator or a reactor. And one great way to do this is to think of an on and off switch on, on lights. So we have an on switch, which means that we choose consciously to create. We use our imagination to think about how do I want this relationship to look like? And what kind of relationship do I want? Or we can use the off switch and just react. This person said something I don't like, so uh, I get really hurt and uh, think about it all day long. Or anything like that. But, think about more ways you can remind yourself to turn on the on switch. I use the simple mantra that every time I see a person, I think to myself or say to myself, I wish for this person to be happy. Amazingly enough, <laughs> this really affects the way I have conversations with people. And we'll talk more about mantras in the last big idea. But for now, figure out a mantra to remind yourself uh, to turn on the on switch to create relationships consciously. And let's not be dogs or dead fish. Our next big idea is acts of kindness. Steve says that there is a bumper sticker that says perform random acts of kindness. But the uh, act of kindness doesn't really have to be random. They can be planned out. And one of the best way, uh, one of the good things about uh, acts of kindness is that they don't rely on you being a certain type of person. So you can't reuse the excuse that I'm just not that kind of person who does nice things for other people. Because that doesn't count. 
is uh, what matters is that you do it. And uh, when, uh, about a year ago, I decided to perform a random act of kindness. It was before I had read anything about this, but I decided to give a birthday present to one of my friends. So uh, I got her a pack of gum, some small packets of candy that I, that I knew she liked, and I wrapped it with tape in post-it notes of different colors and uh, made it look like a box so she couldn't see what it was. And when I gave it to her, she seemed thrilled about the gift. Now, it was cheap and it didn't take a lot of time to make, but it was the act that counted. And I also felt incredible from giving that gift, amazingly enough. So think about how you can perform small, planned out acts of kindness. It can be something like giving, a, buying a cup of coffee for someone, or um, buying them a pack of gum, like I did. It can be telling them something that you like, the way they look, on their hair or something else, their clothes. It can be anything. Our next big idea is gift of silence. Steve says that there is one gift he seldom, uh, that seldom occurs to him to give. And that's the gift of silence. And uh, he got it from his coach, Steve Hardison, his personal success coach. And Steve Hardison has said that he really respects silence and he teaches other people to respect silence. Let other people do the talking. Let the other person do the thinking. Let the other person say what it is he or she want, has want, always wanted to say, but has been too terrified to say because of all uh, of the witty comments of the other person or all of the clever comments. And uh, when, uh, if you're like me, then uh, when you are in a conversation with someone, you all often want to give them advice and say to them what they should do with their lives. But uh, Steve says that uh, the best way to help another person is really not to give advice, but instead give them the gift of silence. Let them talk about the things that they always wanted to say. And Lao Tzu also echoes this wisdom in his book, Tao Te Ching, where he says, because he has given up helping the master, he is people's greatest help. That's the way I interpreted it, at least. So instead of giving people advice, give them the gift of silence. And see what happens. Our next big idea is our deepest craving. The renowned American psychologist and philosopher William James had a quote that said, the deepest craving in human nature is the craving to be... Can you guess what it is? The deepest craving in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Think about it. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh god, I have this huge problem. I am receiving way too much appreciation from people. I'm just getting so sick of it. No, not me either. And in his book, uh, How to Influence and Influence People, Dale Carnegie presents a story that is not true, but illustrates a great truth. So at the end of a long and hard day's work, this farm woman sets before her men a large pile of hay. And when they ask her whether she had gone, has gone crazy, she answers, well, how was I supposed to notice? For 20 years I have been cooking for you men, and without having you ever tell me to let me know that you weren't just eating a big pile of hay. So uh, she never got appreciation through 20 years of cooking for those men. So whenever you have, <clears throat> sorry, when you, whenever you don't know what to say in a conversation with people, Think about one small specific thing you can appreciate about them. About how they look, about how they act, about how they talk, about what they've said to you, or something they did to you. Alright, and see what happens. As always, as you keep being a creator, our last big idea is live forward. The basic idea of living forward is to have a conscious intention of what it is you want your relationship to look like. You don't just simply react. You focus on your intention. And you don't think about let the past stop you and define how it is 
your relationship with someone is going to be, with your family, your co-workers, your friends. They don't list all the past hurts, misunderstandings and problems. Define what it is you're going to do in this relationship. Instead, we want to think about, we want to imagine and may create a picture of what it is we want the relationship to look like. For example, I want to be this person's friend. I want to be this person's spouse. I want to be this person's son, in a good way. So uh, he um, tells us to look at it as a transcendental meditator. He uses a mantra to keep their focus on their breath. Or a mantra, something they say. And whenever their mind wanders, their focus, they bring it back to their breath. Or a mantra. I meditate also, by the way. So uh, whenever your mind focus wanders, think about what it is you want. What do you want this relationship to look like? And one simple mantra, whenever you meet somebody who's your friend, is to just say to yourself, friend, quietly, before you meet that person. I personally say, I wish for this person to be happy. In amazing ways, this actually primes you to have great conversations and relationships with people since you know what you want. There's not simply reacting. Alright, with clear on that, live forward, not backwards. And re realize that our deepest craving of all is to be appreciated. So if you can sp appreciate something specific, you might delight someone. Give people the gift of silence instead of trying to advise and help them. Perform small acts of kindness, for example, buying a small cup of coffee, give, buying someone a lunch, saying something nice to them. <laughs> smiling to a stranger or saying hello to a stranger and uh, creator uh, means creator being a creator is important for all of the ideas you want to constantly flip the on switch and create instead of letting the off switch be off reacting like a dog or a dead fish all right that was a quick look at 50 ways to create great relationships Thank you, Steven Chandler. Steve, Steve Chandler. Now think about the idea that landed, and think about one small action you can take right now to start embodying the idea a bit more in your life, starting today. As we keep actualizing and give our greatest gifts in greatest service to the world. Thanks for watching. Have another awesome day. See ya.